About 5 years ago, this homemade boombox built around a simple car radio was created. But over time, the whole construction slowly fell apart and the big and heavy 12 volt 70 amp battery lost quite a bit of its original capacity. So obviously, it was time for an upgrade. And in this video, I will show you how I create this new lighter, louder and overall easier to operate boombox that can either be powered by the integrated batteries or by mains voltage, which simultaneously can charge the batteries. Let's get started. The heart of the new system is this Pioneer DEH-X6600 DAP car radio, which will be powered by two 12V 7.2Ah lead acid batteries. And for the actual sound playback, I will be using those Salvage 17cm 40W speakers. I connected one of them to pin B3 and B4 of the car radio plug, according to its standardized pinout for first test run. Then I hooked up the ground pin of the radio to the negative terminal of one battery and got myself two double pole double throw switches, which are basically two switches in one package. The first one received four wires, which utilized the opposing output terminals of the switch pair, while the second one only got two wires soldered on. One switch of the four wire switch pair is hooked up to pin A7 and A4 of the radio and is also connected in series to the two wire switch which acts as the main battery power switch by connecting the positive terminal of the battery to the circuit. After hooking up the overpriced digital radio antenna to the car radio and to the 12V power pin A5, it was time for the first test, which turned out to be successful. And just in case you're looking for a cheap antenna to receive digital radio, why not use a short piece of plain old wire? The funny thing is, it works just as well. Ok, moving on. To power the radio with mains voltage and charge the battery as well, I used a 12V 30A power supply. I hooked up the live, neutral and protective ground wire, applied mains voltage and set the output voltage to around 14.5 volts DC. This voltage is necessary to reach the charging voltage of 14.4 volts of the batteries and does also work as the supply voltage of the radio. Next I connected the output of the power supply to the input of the charging controller and that output to the battery. And if you are thinking to yourself, why not just use 14.4V of the power supply to charge the batteries directly? Well, the charging current of a constant voltage source will most certainly exceed the rated initial current of the batteries, which could lead to serious damage. The charging controller, however, can limit the currents and thus improve the lifespan of the batteries. But nevertheless, let's finish this test circuit by connecting the remaining switch pair of the 4 wire switch between the power supply's plus terminal and the pins A7 and A4 of the radio. This complicated 4 wire switch basically cuts off the battery voltage from the radio and replaces it with the power supply voltage. This way, the charging controller can charge the batteries without interfering with the rest of the circuits while the radio keeps on playing its music without any interruptions. And so far, this wiring seems to work pretty well. But later on, I also added a voltmeter in combination with a switch in order to keep track of the battery voltage to prevent an over discharge. Since the radio works with voltages as low as 10 volts, but 11 volts should be the threshold value of over discharge. I also later added another switch in combination with a speaker terminal in order to hook up external speakers as well. A complete parts list with the wiring scheme and better pictures can be found as always in the video description. The last missing part of my boombox was a wood chest to mount all the components. Mine has dimensions of 37.5 by 27.8 by 18.3 cm with a wood thickness of around 1 cm. Firstly, I applied a layer of protective oil on the outside and inside of the box and started the mounting process by marking the location of the speakers on the left and right side of the chest and used a jigsaw to create the circular cutouts. Next, I determined the location for the radio 2 cm underneath the upper ledge, marked the square and cut it out as well with the jigsaw. 
then followed three 5mm holes at a level with the radio for the battery, voltmeter and mains operation switch and afterwards a smaller square underneath for the voltmeter. On the back side I created square cutouts for the mains voltage sockets, the speaker terminal and one additional 5mm hole for the external internal speaker switch. The last major cutout was a hole with a diameter of 2cm in the front left corner of the lid for the antenna, which I mounted into place immediately. Then I got myself a 25cm wide sheet, marked bending edges left and right from the 27.8cm long main section, cut off the excess sheets and finally created a U shape. After removing the protective film, I pressed the customized sheets to the bottom of the chest and drilled two 4mm holes through the front and back side of the box through the sheet. But before bolting it to the box, I used another sheet to create two more U shapes that can mount my batteries to the side of the box as well. With the help of M4 nuts and bolts, I secured the sheets and batteries, which relieves the thin bottom part of the box from too much weight. But don't forget the protective conductor, which later connects to the PE terminal of the mains input. Because safety first. Afterwards, I drilled the necessary holes for the speakers and secured both of them with M4 bolts and nuts as well. With the same tactic, I then mounted the speaker terminal, the mains inputs and the handles to the box. For the power supply, I firstly created a template for the holes, taped that to the bottom, drilled the holes and then secured it with M4 bolts. Next, I pressed the voltmeter into place and hot glued all the switches to their designated spots. The almost last step was the wiring, which should be pretty self-explanatory since I talked about the wiring scheme at the beginning of the video. Only difference is that now I'm using proper ferrules and Vago terminal blocks to establish a good electrical connection as well as two car radio sockets in order to remove the radio at any time. Once the cable chaos was complete, I performed a successful final test, cleaned up the wiring with zip ties, mounted the radio in its place, added two pairs of magnets to keep the lids properly closed and the project was finished. I'm really happy with how it turned out and with an average current draw of roughly 1.6 amps, I should be able to enjoy my music up to 9 hours continuously. Which is not bad. I hope you like this project and maybe it inspires you to build something similar. As always, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Consider supporting me through Patreon to keep such videos coming. Stay creative and I will see you next time.